Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Spares Box. Today we're back on the Sentry and we're going to complete the tasks we set out to do a couple of weeks ago, that being the spark plugs, the accessory belt, a coolant flush, and we also now have a fuel filter. Um, the reason we're now tackling all of that is I've actually managed to locate a full engine gasket kit within Australia. Um, obviously I wouldn't recommend to buy a gasket kit just to do spark plugs normally, because that kit is over $1,000. However, the only other option was to wait two to three months to get one out of Japan because at the moment freight's so slow and whatnot. Um, so I'd much rather have the plugs done and what I'll most likely do is actually replace the parts we steal from that kit and then most likely sell it on as a complete kit again. So effectively I'll, I'll end up only having to buy the gaskets I need. Um, either that or we'll end up rebuilding this engine, hopefully not the latter. Uh, but yeah, today we're gonna jump straight into it. Um, gonna tackle the engine bay first do all the stuff in there and then we'll finish up with the fuel filter. Let's do it. That's not gone well. well. That has needs to be changed now. Well, it looks pretty good inside, all things considered. That's a time, that's 4.35. Well, those plugs are old as the hills. I don't reckon they've ever been changed, eh? We've got all the passenger side back together. We've got our Denso plugs back in the car. Uh, everything's all reassembled to the point where we need to refit the inlet manifold. Um, we do need to still tackle the driver's side. It's pretty tedious, so Gian's gonna bail and uh, do some running around for a bit. And then hopefully by the time he gets back, pretty much ready to throw the plugs back in. Um, it's pretty boring to watch, so I don't think anyone's gonna be super keen to watch a whole nother rock cover pull apart again. But um, yeah, basically gonna whip the rock cover off. Um, do all the stuff we've already done on this side, throw it back together, then we'll get our inlet manifold all back together and put our thousand million vacuum lines back on. 
Uh, I do need to get some brake booster hose as well so we can uh, replace the two pieces that have actually damaged. And then once we've done that, we'll move on to our accessory belt. Then we'll do our coolant flush. And then to finish off, we'll do our fuel filter. Oh, welcome back. We're about to refit uh, both of these factory intakes that go between the throttle bodies and the airflow meters. And I've actually noticed that one of these resonator boxes has a pretty big old hole in it. Um, the plastic's just degraded. Sometimes over time, the plastic just rots. And that's what's happened with this. Um, as a byproduct, this is now drawing air directly uh, through this resonator box, which uh, while it might not seem much of a big deal, it's both um, basically drawing through unfiltered air but also unmetered air. So it means that one bank is gonna run a lot leaner than the other. Um, we may be able to see that in the ECU trims. Uh, it may have like a long-term fuel trim that's 20% more than the other side for, for argument's sake. Uh, but basically what we're gonna do, rather than try and find these things, which is probably quite a hard part to find, especially in Australia, I'm actually just gonna plug these off so that um, it's, they're not gonna have a resonator chamber anymore. Um, potentially by doing that we may get some sweet uh, V12 induction noises but I highly doubt it's going to be any massive in, massive uh, difference being that we're still running the air boxes. But yeah, it's definitely worth looking at these sort of things pretty closely when you're putting your car back together, especially if it is an airflow metered car. Obviously if it was a, a vehicle that only ran a map sensor or map sensors, uh, this wouldn't be as much of an issue as far as the engine running is concerned but it's still an issue because you're drawing through unfiltered air. So. Definitely recommend to check these sort of weird things when they're hanging off your intakes. Fuel under the arm, it's the worst. Yeah, laugh it up, internet. Oh, I forgot the pain of fuel in the underarm. How oh, I have not missed the. I can't 
it was melting worse. My shoes and my underarms. Just clear me volleys up. One of the most commonly overlooked parts of the cooling system is the radiator cap. Uh, this being a brand new genuine one, this being a second hand or the, the original one most likely for the car actually. Uh, looking at the seals, they are gone really bad, split and perished. Um, and these are quite a common uh, cause of cooling system problems, overheating, um, not being able to actually retain or recover coolant. Uh, a lot of the problems are actually based around radiator caps and not being uh, replaced periodically. Um, I like to replace caps kind of every 100,000 Ks. Every time you do a major service, chuck a couple of caps on it or a cap, depending on the system. Most Subarus run two caps if they're turbo. Um, obviously, different manufacturers run different setups, but these are very commonly overlooked and highly recommend to replace these periodically. Well, that's us done for another day on the Century, part two of our road trip prep series. Um, bit, of a, bit of a mission and to be quite honest, a much bigger job than I was uh, anticipating, but we've got it all back together. All seems to run pretty well, no leaks or anything like that. We've now got fresh coolant in the cooling system, new cap as well to top it off, no pun intended. And uh, hopefully it'll uh, service now for years to come reliably. Don't forget guys, BCW 5 upon checkout on Sparesbox. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Still burning. <laughs>